Good morning, it's Tuesday, October 30th, 2018. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Turn Back and Live, and our scripture is Ezekiel chapter 18. God is speaking, and he says, Do you think that I like to see wicked people die, says the Sovereign Lord? Of course not. I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. However, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things and act like other sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. All their righteous acts will be forgotten, and they will die for their sins. Yet, you say, the Lord isn't doing what's right. Listen to me, O people of Israel. Am I the one not doing what's right, or is it you? I've heard it so often, and I expect to hear it again whenever the news reports some financial ruin or a gruesome diagnosis or some violent act like a mugging or hate crime, like last week's shooting. It goes something like, how could God let this happen to innocent people? There are a myriad of responses we could trot out, but there are two ringing loudly in my bones today on the heels of another deranged man killing 11 people and the ensuing accusations and counter-blame attempts. Number one, there are no totally innocent people. And secondly, while God appears to be passively standing by and passively letting it all happen, nothing could be farther from the truth. About that totally innocent thing, and an innocence in the human family, the Apostle Paul, quoting the Old Testament prophets, said that among humans there are none righteous. Paul, as well as traditional Christian theology, not to mention common sense, tell us that we have inherited and respond to Adam's sinful nature. That's why God's acceptance of penitent sinners is based on mercy through his grace and mercy, not on our behavior. Thank God for that. It's our behavior which gets us into trouble. Christ's behavior of sacrifice on the cross is what gets us out. And then that thing about God being a passive bystander, it's exactly the opposite. Sovereign God is not only our creator, he's the sustainer of all life and active in all that happens. Just consider these few verses, Second Chronicles 20 and verse 6. O Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. And then Revelation 19, verse 6. Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd or the roar of mighty ocean waves or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. To reign as a sovereign means you're actively orchestrating the life and order of your subjects. God, omniscient, understanding and aware of everything that has happened, is happening, and will happen, is the very definition of supervising his creation, and with a very detailed hand. When the early stages of man's development took a wrong turn, God turned things around. King Nimrod of Babel decided to secede from the union of God with man and built him a monument, a tower, God did not stand passively by, Genesis chapter 11. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Come, let us go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. Ultimately, God, sovereign ruler of the universe and all that exists, is orchestrating life and the times and events of mankind to suit his plans for what is his. Like it or not, we must be ready to cooperate with that plan. To do otherwise is beyond foolish. For you today, do you have plans for today? What in those plans convinces you that you're cooperating with God's sovereign will? Each you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.